Praise God. Uh, a quick one. I'm really excited about tomorrow. We we'll take a bit of time tomorrow. Um, not so much, not so long, but would we'll, since tomorrow is a public holiday, we will do activations tomorrow. But it's all of us that's going to be participating in it. Um, we're going to do activations tomorrow. Uh, we'll do examples, um, people's prophetic word. We'll try and process it. Um, tomorrow we'll be looking at how to receive and you know give prophetic words. You know, um, those that are um, those that are already working the prophetic will have an opportunity to refine. Those that have been praying to God about it will have an opportunity to refine. So I'm really thinking that we can maximize the. What do you think? You can comment in the. Um, if we put a comment in the in the chat box, what do you think about us maximizing tomorrow to get a bit practical about all that we have learned and have an opportunity to um, give words, judge words, um, analyze prophetic word as we received, and have like an impartation. So let me know what you think about that. If you're up for it, we'll do it. If you think now nah, we shouldn't, we won't go there. All right. So let me know what you think in the chat box. Amen. Okay. While I'm waiting for your comments, we're gonna. All right. Awesome. We're gonna go into judging and receiving prophetic words. Um, the scripture says in First Thessalonians about not being skeptical, do not be, um, what's the word now? It told us not to scorn or mock prophetic, the prophetic, but we should judge every prophetic word. Do not mock or scorn prophetic, the prophetic, but judge test every spirit, test every spirit. And that's where a lot of us get to uh, wondering, uh, uh, um, I don't know if anybody here has received a word that you know was negative. You could just say yes or raise your hand. And um, so we're gonna learn how do we test spirits without, and are you aware that prophets can actually make mistakes without being false prophets? At least in the oh thanks, we just see your hand up. In the New Testament, in the New Covenant, right? Um, you could test spirits, judge, and all of that. The way they were able to judge word back then in the Old Testament was simply by if it come to pass or not. Like as a point, did it come to pass? If not, they stone you to death and all those kind of thing. And in fact, if you give a word, like we see the Ahab and all of that killing prophets, if you give a word that the person's not happy with, he can decide to do any out. All right. But in the New Testament, because we bear the spirit of God inside, not just upon us, it wasn't just a spirit that comes upon us and leave after a while. We are able to test every word. I want to tell someone this morning, regardless of who gives you the word, regardless of who is declaring the word over you and all of that. Do not be skeptical, all right? Do not be skeptical about it, but test every word, test every spirit. Be able, you must be able to go back and inquire of the Lord, God, is this you? What does this mean? Test every spirit. So let us go into that briefly, okay? We need to understand that. And one of the reasons is that we also must be able to, we must be willing to want to hear God and share what God is saying without adding our own interpretation. The first thing I want to talk about receiving prophetic word or giving is called something called the accent, A-C-C-E-N-T. We are a product of our culture. Um, God wants to be, we're a product of our culture, teachings, our background, our origin, our gender, and all of these things. And all of these elements are part of who we are. And unconsciously, they flavor our prophetic words. This filtering process actually becomes part of our prophetic experience. In other words, when the Holy Spirit gives us a word for someone, it's so brilliant that it actually factors in our accent. So it becomes part of the prophetic declaration. I mean, God is so brilliant that he's able, he knows that, oh, your background and everything. And that's why he will must work with God to the point where that even though um, the way we speak and all of that, God will use it, but we must be careful not to over 
like do not always be quick to interpret based on just your exposure or what you see, what you know. All right. So um, we will always have prophetic style. People will always have the way, you know, the style and all of that. But be careful not to just say, if it's not this way, it cannot be prophetic. There's some people, um, I, I've really noticed that Africans were, and I think it's also because of our exposure. No, I won't say exposure in terms of negative, no, but because of how um, the church has become, we're praying on the Holy Ghost. I think we are one people that were really bold and we are quite aggressive and, you know, intense. So we're praying the Holy Ghost and everything. It's not like that everywhere. Some people are like that too. But if you notice that Africa, a lot of times people cannot, most Africans can't prophesy without speaking in tongues. Now, the thing about it is, um, it's not like it's bad, but some people are picking it up. So people that are also, you know, working in prophetic or just receiving the gift now, they're beginning to think that's the only way. And what happened with that is, then they feel that without speaking in tongues, they cannot prophesy. And that's not true. That's not true. A lot of people cannot, like, they must go. I'm not talking about a little speaking in tongues um, and then speak. No, some people will go, la, 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 basha, la, la, and they are screaming, they are shouting, they are intense before they can deliver the word. Now, don't think that is, the, that is how the Holy Spirit always, don't think that if I'm not speaking in tongues, shaking, screaming, God is not delivering a word. It doesn't have to be that way. So what has happened is a lot of us are now watching instead of learning just through the spirit of God and our culture and environment. You know, I remember I was in a meeting, um, I think years ago, and the guy was speaking about, I think it was on Chris Valentin, about how, imagine you're walking into a, you're walking into Google or Facebook calls you for a meeting with the board leaders, or sometimes when they invite people to come to, um, what's that thing in Switzerland, um, United Nations, and you have, you have the opportunity to speak, then you start, and it's a meeting, it's a board meeting, but you have a word. You won't be have all the opportunity all the time. Because a lot of times people speak in tongues and do the rabbit and pause and all to gain get themselves. All right. But you can actually begin to learn. And that's why it's good for practice for learning that you know what? Yes, don't get me wrong. There are times where that's it. And I don't, I'm not ashamed. And I don't want us to, we're not trying to copy the white or anything. Let's be who we are, but let's go back to scriptures that you really don't have to. So a lot of people are learning it and sometimes they're doing it not in the spirit, but in the flesh, because that's how they've seen that it's done. So imagine you're in that kind of meeting and they want you are asked to maybe give a word we feel led. You might not be able to start lele. I'm le, not because you're ashamed of that, but you must understand that you have people of different, you know, background accents and all of that there. And you really can just really hear God. And release what God is saying without having to speak in tongues. Especially when speaking in tongues, is like startup pack, it's like you're trying to pull a generator and you're trying to pick. You don't have to go that way, except the Lord is leading you that way. I don't even make sense. So the law, yes, to say you can't speak in tongues and prophesy. There's no law. It's just that be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it's not doing rebel shatter and all of that, and you can deliver a word. But what has happened is a lot of us are used to that. I don't know if I'm making sense, and we can't operate outside of that and you can't operate outside of that and you have to be careful i remember last week something happened at the point i was giving the word you know at a point i felt a strong compassion to intercede for this person i broke out in tongues and i went back to my understanding and it wasn't me directing these things what i'm saying is that do not live in the realm of the flesh where you just do things because ah that's how they said it too we are five shandala two repubu three, hallelujah, then slide, slide, the, slide the tongues inside of it, mix it up again. It's not, it's not marshmallows or not that we're doing champagne or cocktail, but we're just trying to mix up things. So you need to first, remember we started from here, God, train yourself, be, begin to build your confidence in God, you know, and just start from where you are. So if it is, you are, you are led to pray in the Holy Ghost, go ahead and do that. But believe you me, you can actually, because guess what? Another thing that's happened is our accent here is a lot of people don't know how to give words in as precise as possible. So you 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 want to give somebody who's walking on the road, you're very quick to want to say, oh God, you're getting a word about, don't worry. Sometimes God, if God does not give you a deeper interpretation, leave it as that. Remember what I saw you last week about the woman that wanted God someone to just say, you are wearing a yellow shirt. The guy got it right and got the interpretation wrong. 
you're wearing a yellow shirt and there's one shout wow and none of us do that okay 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 yeah, yeah say hey so that yellow shirt it is yellow moon it is yellow sun it is yellow it means that yellow is your bed if you don't have an interpretation that kind of interpretation god just keep quiet stop speaking when god spoke. stop speaking wait and be careful what you hear like what's the interpretation god is given so a lot of people don't know how to be so precise you can give a prophetic word in one minute or two minutes you must train because it depends on what sphere God is letting you to. You might not always have the time to go on for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Don't get me wrong. There are times where the prophetic word has taken so much time. But what if you're in a place and people are in it or, and they need to go? Are you able to get out of your way and deliver? So I've gone into a bit of prophetic etiquette. So I'm coming. So let me come back to what I'm saying about testing spirits and all of that. But I brought up the issue of our accent because... We all want to be, we should want to be faithful to share what God is saying without adding our own human reasoning, our own interpretation, our own advice to any prophetic word we receive from the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we are adding our advice. Sometimes you look at somebody, I don't know about you, you see somebody that is dressed in a way and you just assume something about that person because people that dress that way are X, Y, Z. I don't know what I'm saying. And then unconsciously, let me tell you something. Every time you're giving a prophetic word, don't even think for a moment that your, your consciousness is not alive. I don't know if that makes sense. Don't even, I don't know about you, but your head is alive. You just need to learn to um, subject that to the Holy Spirit. You just need to quiet your spirit so that it's just the Spirit of God that you're hearing. And it's just the Spirit of God you're declaring. What the Spirit is saying is what you're declaring. So you are prophesying, but you can actually, if you have not learned to discipline yourself to hear the voice of God, and I remember I said it's going to take practice, time, and all of that. I'm going to give you guys an assignment again today. If you don't learn to subject it, you will say what you assume. You will add your interpretation. You would, and, and so don't even feel bad if that happens. Just learn to be more disciplined and just continue to speak what God is saying and all of that. We must desire it, all right? So while God is aware, and sometimes we intentionally use our prophetic accent, don't get me wrong, God, we use, sometimes the way we speak in John, it, I was into one of God, someone who said, I said, Africans, don't be under pressure to be like us Americans or the British or whatever. You know, the way we are intense in our prayer, in our singing, our dancing, God is aware and is an expression of God. The only problem is to do anything, whether be quiet or be loud or sneeze or don't talk because as you're not led, you are taking it as formula, taking it out. That's how it is. No. Okay. It can be a prophetic style for you to pray in tongues as you give the word. But I'm just saying that be open to the Holy Spirit so that whatever he wants is able to uh, flow through you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, 21 says, do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophetic utterances, but examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good. Some of us have gotten wrong words. I don't know if anybody here have had a negative experience. I don't know if you're here. I can just take one briefly to share about a prophetic word that has either almost ruined your life, destroyed your family, or something negative that's happened with a prophetic word. I don't know if you want to share. You can just raise your hand. I'll, I'll, I'll check you out as, as, we're go, as we're going on. But a lot of people have, especially some part of this world, we've experienced negative impact of the prophetic. And because of that, people have just either want to throw it out of church. Some other churches, they don't want to even hear it. Speaking in terms of prophetic, prophet who they just don't want it to happen because of the negative influence. But we cannot, because of negative influence, stop what God has said is a gift Stop what God is giving as a blessing. All right. All right. Kelly Tree, do you want to go and share your experience quickly? Yeah. Good morning, P.I. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I mean, it wasn't to me, Sha, but it affected my family. So it was my dad. My dad is a pastor. And so he had this spiritual mom that started to say prophecies for him and say that my mom was a witch. My mom was, wow. was affecting so many things around him. And that God said that he should leave the house to go and seek his face and pray. And, you know, you know, he's, he hates my mom so much, you know, because it just feels like my mom has done something to him. My mom has blown away his wealth spiritually. You no, know? she mm -hmm. fed him with all those lies. I think they're no more together, but, you know, she has done a lot of damage already, which is so hard to... To, to yes and my dad is still living in the still living in that bubble you know till now so, wow yeah. wow thank you so much i know of somebody else here 
I will just pray restoration for your dad and your mom in the name of Jesus. We pray that God yes. is a son of God. So God is going to bring light. We pray the Lord will bring light yes. to Kalichi's dad in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. There's somebody else here. A dad will not hear. Okay, let me take one more. Miriam, go ahead. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Good morning. So, uh, is exactly like Kilichi's. So funny enough, I'm from a family of Muslims. You know, but my father was approached by a couple of people from a particular, you know, denomination. And because of how, you know, superstitious we generally are in Africa, he just basically believed, even though he doesn't even believe in Jesus Christ, right? They told him that his wife is evil. His wife is responsible for many things. In his, life. his wife is trying to kill him, blah, blah, blah. And it literally just activated paranoia. This thing happens wow. was in, I'll say, up 10 years ago, when SS2, that was ages ago, over 10 years ago, until today, my father still calls me. When he calls me, you can still hear how active that fear that they released in him is. He's always so scared. He's like, what did you tell your mommy about me? What, 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 what? Just so, and it, <laughs> it did a lot to my family. I have two younger ones. Because of the word that was released like i had to become a mother before <laughs> while uh, my mates while my mates were learning how to be children as in that entire season of my life i did not have that i had to take on responsibilities very fast so you can imagine <laughs> what that one word did to my entire family like my so can i ask family. you guys like you and kelechi so how do you guys take the prophetic now Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. <laughs> I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I understand, you know, <clears throat> I mean, every good thing can be corrupted, but I'm all right. for it. Yeah. But did this, Kelechi, how do you initially were yeah. you skeptical after okay. about this? So prophetic? first, first, my name is Ibuna Adiola. Sorry, I say Kelechi. My daughter's right. name is Kelechi. So she usually uses my Zoom for class. So I forgot to okay. change it. Anyways, right. that doesn't even matter. Um, right now that I understand the person of God better, I know that God doesn't give those kind of prophecies. Right. So right. I'm open to prophecy. So if you are saying something that is rubbish or more, I did I did come out my ear fast fast because I know that that is not the way understanding God now, you know, joining these classes, yeah, everything. I know that that is not how God is. That God doesn't. It right. doesn't come and just sow seed of discord into families like that. Even if your wife is a witch, there are ways to go about it. It's not that God will tell you to leave right. your house because he wants right. you to go and pray. Yeah. Wow. So, Miriam, your dad, your parents are not together anymore. Yeah. Hello, Miriam. Your parents yes, are not yes. together anymore. Yes, yes, yeah. For over wow. years or so. Yes. Wow. So guys, can we see the weight? Thank you so much for sharing your story. Can we see the weight of what we are carrying? I know one of my beloved darlings and daughter, um, our own, we are still praying. If the if a prof, one particular woman, not any prophet, he gives all his tithes, you can tell him to not sell that house, collect, don't do this one, as in wrecking the family, making the man just, you know, even for my, uh, my people have gone to bathe at the, what are people looking for? And that's why guys, there are hundred of us here. If all of us stand up to ask the Lord for these gifts of the prophetic, not so that we can be showing off or doing any out, because a lot of us still don't understand what is at stake. So that you can go to your own community. What do I mean? Your 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 school, your friends, and go to your own community and teach and bless people and begin to release right words. We would reduce this level of madness. And guys, you know, it's happening again. I told you a story of how a man told a lady, which is wife, the Lord said that we should be sleeping with you. The Lord said you should be my third, second wife or something. And this went on for two years. So one of the things that makes, number one, we need to begin to teach a generation that they can actually test prophecy by knowing the person of Jesus. If you don't know the person of Jesus, you would, now, which is what is happening in Africa a lot of time, is this personality thing. We've elevated the personality of men of God more than God. So you elevate the personality of men of God, you feel like they're infallible, you can't ask questions. 
All right, let me read this other one from someone. It said, I was told several, I several prophet that a guy I was dating at the time was my husband, yet I was having a weird dream about it and I, I didn't have peace. Um, okay, ever since I dreaded pastors and prophets, please, did you hope you didn't marry the guy or you married the guy? Um, so that's the thing. For instance, about marriage as well, a lot of us here, you still carry him to pastors to so go and take which one is which. Sometimes it's not even you, is maybe your parents. Maybe you don't have control over that. You want to marry somebody. Maybe that's what we'll do on the second uh, holiday. I talk about how receiving um, the call it directional prophecies, you have to be very careful. Carry your bag, relocate. The Lord is saying, don't take that job, take that job. These are life defining moments whereby you might receive the word, but you have to sit down with God. What does this word mean? What is God saying about it? Test the spirit. Now let's talk about testing the spirit. You know that in the spirit realm, a lot of there a lot of portals. You have mediums, you have witches, you have people in coven, you have people, demonic people that can actually sit down and be telling you things that, yes, actually, you have five children. Your name is, uh, your son name is Usman. This one, this one, that one. They can literally, but that does not mean it's the spirit of God. It could be diabolical. And if the moment you open yourself up to diabolical means, you're opening yourself up to influences that, beyond, that are not Christ. And they are very destructive. You see people that are going to do money ritual. Why does it, why are people still doing money ritual if it doesn't work? That means the ritual is working. But it's demonic because they will pay for it. They'll pay with their life. They'll pay with their family's life. It is demonic. If it's not working, people will have stopped it. So you understand that the, the spirit realm, there are different means, there are different things, there are different things that can influence it. Like what they've shared, a lot of people have left their, our, gener, our father's generation. Is that the husband, wife has left the husband or the husband has left the wife or they carry all the money they used to raise their children, giving to some people. The one that happened to my own dad, and that was one of the things that my other brother, uh, my stepbrother, to today, when you he, he now hear that, he said, ah, let me see, yeah, pastor, we'll go, we thank God that God is helping us. He says, ah, eh, I don't know what those guys did. They're very boyish. Um, I don't know what um, these guys did to dad. I remember that day, Popsy just came back with a brand new car. You know, we had a very lovely car. And it too just moved from Islam. And the first side of people was this denomination of church that he met. And the next thing they told him to do was that he should bring all his properties. My father carried the car, dropped it. He said, there's no one to do deliverance in the bush. Coconut started chasing them. See, when he died, them, that's why we're always laughing. He beat the living day out of these people. And um, guys, we need to wake up. Let this be a motivation to so say, Father, I, for the sake of our generation. And that's why I say prophetic is not just about speaking words as much as it is about teaching and raising a people to hear God, raising a people to hear God. All right. So the next thing is, yes, prophets, Michael, your mic is on. Prophets can make mistakes without being false prophets. That's why you test the spirit. There was a time that Agabus prophesied that there will be, there will be famine and it happened. And then the same Agabus, <laughs> the same Agabus then says that, oh, it got in, he missed interpretation of the what he saw about Paul that he will be bounded by um, Jews will bound bind this man and hand him over to the hands of the Gentiles. But realize that that's not exactly how it happened. So there are other things in scripture that showed about how certain times it doesn't make them wrong. That's why you must test the spirit. And I'm going to read another um, source I had experience too. Fantastic. You can share it with us. Someone said, My younger sister gave birth to a child who died. And the prophet told her that it was my mom that was in charge. <laughs> hey, God. And she hated my mom and also said that to be a witch. Though my mom wasn't aware, but later she gave it in gate and the child lived and it all ended. Thank God. Thank God. But guys, you know why we're looking at it as, ah, that's my father, we cannot be stupid. I would, maybe, on, I, would, yeah, I know of people's story that I believe, even in this day and age, manipulation, please, is the personality of Jesus that must be exalted, not the personality of a prophet or anything. We celebrate them, we thank God for them because they are gifts of Jesus to the body. So there is honor that comes to them that is blessed, but not at the detriment. Nobody should become your intermediary. Nobody should come to it. Exactly. Even someone who's was who never, never fell to the ground, almost made a mistake by anointing somebody else as king. And God said, that's not the person I want. So 
know this, test all spirits. How do you test all spirit? Number one. So let me quickly show you something briefly about judging the prophetic word. Number one, is it is it scriptural? The scripture is our blueprint to evaluate whether or not whether or not a prophetic word contains the DNA of God. Anytime a prophetic word is in disagreement with scripture, it should immediately be discarded. Is it in line with scripture? You told me now that God wants me to be sleeping with you and your wife. That is for adultery. I don't need a higher level of understanding to know that that is not right. However, do you know that? Is it extra biblical? Now, the entire Bible is in God, but not all of God's word is in the Bible. This, some, this, I'm reading from Chris Valentin's book. As someone said, I don't believe that. Now, extra biblical means a practice or process that is not specifically divine in Bible. However, does not alter the DNA of the scripture and all. Most of us, what we practice is not really clearly stated. It, it, it's not clearly stated in the Bible when you work in Access Bank or GTB. You will not open your Bible and say, okay, God says work in GTB. But God can, he will lead you through his scriptures. He will lead you through his word. He will give you a promise. He will show you something in scripture that can be interpreted to see what you need to do. An example of an extra biblical Bible will be something like, you always know, say, go to Africa, work at this job, move to this spirit, or write with this city, or write this word to this person. While none of this instruction was specifically written in the Bible, the author of scripture, the Holy Spirit, is the one who gives you the clearance of whether or not the word, word is of God. Whether or not the word is of God, even if it gives you a prophetic word that contains directly a scripture, oftentimes the application is extra biblical. For instance, someone might say to you, the Lord is speaking Psalm 60 verse 1, all right, shine for the light has come, and all of you must understand what it means and how to apply it. Anti-biblical means, test it, be careful of any anti-biblical word. It's against the Bible. Read Galatians 1 verse 8. Paul was saying, but even if we, that's even in, if himself, Paul, or any angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you. It is to be accost. It is to be rejected. It is to be accost. In the name of God, anyone that comes anti-biblical, test your spirit doesn't connect to that spirit. Not in terms of, I like, I don't like. No, there's something you, you can't place your hand. Check it, please. Any word, then every prophet must bear witness with the spirit of the one who receives it. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. Romans 8.16. There has to be a knowing in your, in your spirit. Sometimes someone will give you like, oh my God, that's how we eat it. Well, and another problem is sometimes you receive a word and it's speaking about your circumstance. Doesn't mean it's right. Because another thing that happens is people begin to give you a word and you begin to interpret it based on your circumstance. You begin to, for instance, you're trusting God for marriage and then you're beginning to receive word that, oh God, Lord is sending someone your way. The Lord be open to send you someone your way. The Lord might send someone your way for, to partner for business. Send someone your way or something else. But you begin to, ah, well, that means husband, husband. So any brother, as the person comes, they've given me a word, that's husband. Please, you have to be very careful. And do not be afraid that you've, let me give an example of my sister as we wrap up this morning. I'll read some of the other comments soon. My elder sister, and I'm going to bring on this call, one of this morning, I'm going to tell her to come and share. And Fika had a word, she received the word herself, not that somebody gave to her, because she's hearing God and everything. And don't be afraid that you have received the word, you believe God for a word, and then you and then it looked like it did not come to pass. And all of a sudden, you just say, I would never, because it, it scared her. And I pray for someone this morning that that's the, the situation, that the Lord will set you free. So she received the word about a guy. No, okay, this is what I have. A guy asked her how she said no. Then yes, a while later, she received the word that that guy is actually her husband. And she, she's going to wait for that. They've lost touch. So she waited for this guy for four years, praying, you know, like, okay, I, I believe God. Because she has heard other things that came to pass and shared and everything. Eventually, oh, the guy came around. and oh, came, they met again. I was excited. Finally, God's word does not lie. She met this guy. When we were on campus, I was pointing for God and all. She met this guy later, and the guy... Now is a hey, something else is drinking and you know the meds and she was excited. One, she told the guy, Oh my god, I've been waiting. Let me warn you here. Please, if the Lord reveal anything to you about you, especially about life partner, until you even when you marry, like until you marry, don't tell somebody that, oh, wow, I know that you are God told me that you are the one for me. It is your conviction, not the person. Because guess what? 
I've known people that have made decisions because of the conviction of another, and then they get into it and there's a problem. They are angry. They feel trapped. In any way, I only married because you said God says so. Do not tell that person. It's your conviction. Oh, shit. I had my conviction about my husband. I didn't tell him. If I was after, I think we're about getting married. I said, date, that's well, okay. I think move on. Don't, because it's very mad. The same God that appeared to Mary actually appeared to Joseph to say that, yes, let me give Joseph the let, like I impregnated at this immaculate con conception. Da, 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 da. All right. So, and Fikara went ahead, told the guy, that was not, that was one mistake, but that's not the only thing. The guy was like, wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, that was spooky. Like, what? You waited for four years for what? What if I didn't meet you? Not, but that's not where the guy was going. One day she went to surprise the guy. And the guy was like, you didn't tell me you're coming. Please go back. The guy literally was not the same person. Now, the mistake a lot of us make is this. Because you think you have received the word and you don't want to be wrong. Some of us think that we need to make sure that word comes to pass. So <laughs> thank God my bonky is here to see I will be. She, she was in school. We were in school together when I was dating my ex and everything. So I can reference that again. So she immediately put this guy vis-a-vis -vis the fruit of the spirit. Remember what we said about um, being scriptural? This guy, the fruit this guy is exhibiting now, he's not in line with scripture. I've waited four years. Is it possible I heard wrong? And the guy was like, I'm not interested. Like, go back home. The guy was like acting weird. She would have stayed there and said, like, like God said it. I would, and she would have died there. And if we eventually married the guy, she would have been miserable. So she went back to God and felt like, you know what, let it go. Of course, she was broken for a long time. I think for a while, my sister did not tell anybody is what God is saying. She just continued loving God. But when it comes to hearing God and all, she just felt like, how could I have wasted, like God, four years? Four years. But God is merciful. God is kind. And thank God for meetings like this. Thank God for platforms like this. And I'll tell you another way you can just um, prophetic word. Have your spiritual authority that you trust and you know that I've been with. And this is what I receive as a word. This is a dream I had. I perceive this is what's interpretation. What do you think? And one of the things I love about our community is that it's not just um, me that is here. Thank God for people like Moji, Maureen. There are a lot of our leaders that you can speak with and say, oh, what? And we eat. Or even your own pastor. You don't have to even be here. All right, so please, thank God Afikai was able to pull out. She's happily married to another guy. The guy, we don't even know what's happening to him now. A lot of us would have gotten stuck. I got words about my ex. In fact, Tosi, my bonky, she never wanted me to date anybody. <laughs> Tosi just wanted me to present myself only and accept the words of the Lord. She didn't want anything to stay me. My, she was like, Miss, no, please. I don't want anything to happen to you. Don't want it to be. And anyways, so. But I got words. People got words. Different people, I will go to play like, wow, we confirm this is the man for you. Glory. But we're not married today because guess what? Certain things happen that it doesn't, it's not in line with God. There are certain attributes, there are certain things that happen. The, the person even broke up with me before I found out. Like so many things happened that I'm like, this is not in line with God. But I went back to God. God, what do I do with this? Listen to me. When I got words, the only thing I got, I got peace. Peace that there's a breakup. But what happened is because of trusted authority, Pastor Bethel, I can never forget. When I was seeking counsel, she said to me, let me see, whatever you struggle to get, you will struggle to keep. That word never left me. So what I got to navigate that city was not another word, what was wisdom. Do you hear me? Even wisdom can, is, is, Bible says get wisdom. Wisdom will guide you. So a lot of us are making mistakes because we are wanting that confirmation to come spooky. It might just be in a conversation. Somebody will just drop something that will confirm, click in your spirit. So when it bears with it in your spirit, wait. And that's how I'm here today. Thank God. I've moved on. I'm great. I'm excited. I'm thank thank God for my future. If I, a lot of us get offended, we I don't know whether it's a complex thing. The moment you feel, well, I heard God. Why did he Baba calm down? Be coming down. You are learning, you're growing in these giftings. Okay, Lord, God cannot lie. Okay, is it possible that my interpretation was wrong? Is it possible that the timing was wrong? Okay, Lord, I'm here. What do I do? Don't get stuck. Don't, Abraham, they told Abraham to go and kill child. The same God, as he was about to kill the child, says, stop. Imagine Abraham was not listening. He didn't put his ears, ah, God has said, and you're not paying attention to what God is saying. You would have missed out on it. Okay, so test it. You bear, your spirit must bear um, witness with it. The fruit of the prophetic word must be the, that the person receiving it is brought closer to God and his people. It must not be a word, Philippians 3, 8 to 10. It must not be a word that brings closer to the prophets. It's a word that should bring closer to God. Thank God for the prophet or the pastor. That's how you know. The prophetic word that you have to come back and do renewal. 
every so you have received it, come back again. So what is God saying, sir? And then you cannot make any decision now without oh God, prophets. Um, I need to read another one here. It says that okay, I didn't get my I didn't get married to the guy, but we got engaged. When God now led me to my husband, the prophet just told me that it was from the marine spirits. My heart place is I thank God for delivering me. Thank God for that. I also had a prophetic word. I spoke with a prophet who said he received a word that and had to come all the way to my house to deliver me. Wow. I was skeptical. So he called my neighbor and told her to come to my house in five minutes. And I left my door open. And the pastor, pastor arrived and said that there's a lot of struggle with my family. And I had to hug him tightly. <laughs> to receive the word. Oh my God. This is funny. To receive the power of God to be free. Kai, where is this in the word of God? Ignorance and desperation also make us fall into this trap. We need to be hungry for the word of God over the prophetic word, but usually it tends to be the other way around. Because of my, because of lack of knowledge, my people perish because of lack of knowledge, the Lord says. By the way, the prophet kept asking me if I was home alone so that well, I can touch and minister the word very well to you. Guys, we need to be very careful. I'm telling you, I know this, that people, I, I was speaking to some of my darlings over the weekend, weekend and they came to share about certain decisions they made because somebody told them. I know people that have told them that God said you should empty your account. Yes, God says you should empty your account, but you have to be a witness of your spirit. Why can't God tell you? You go to some meetings and the way they will talk about it. Someone said, I've gone to a meeting, Pastor Edward, you guys can't wait. To, I can't wait for you to be Pastor Edward. He went for a meeting and the way the man said it, he didn't come thousand dollars, do it now, your glory, your distance. He felt moved. Emotions, he went down. As he came back, he gave, dropped his rent. The Lord told him, I didn't send you. You're going to, I did send you with that. Thank God for mercies, but he, he, he chopped the cane of it and eventually got in his mercies. Do not be emotional. It's your life. Set, but the balance is, do not scorn prophecy. Do not say all of them, they are, they, all of them are, they are, what's that word? They, all of them are scorn. All of them are rogues. All of them are liars. No, God still speaks his word. But you must be hungry for the word of God. Another way you judge is the prophet and leadership that, you're, that, you are, that we are in a relationship with should be in agreement with the word and its interpretation. The prophet and leadership that we are in a relationship with should be in agreement with the word and its application and application. I'm going to give, and the last one is the interpretation of any prophetic word, any prophetic revelation belongs to God, not to human beings. Therefore, we also need the Holy Spirit anointed to know the meaning of the word as well. It's not just to one man. I'll give you one more example. Kika shared this experience with me. Somebody sent Kika a, a, um, a DM about one long word. You are this. There's the, another guy. Guess what? Kika was like, oh my God. Immediately what she did, she spoke to her mentor, who is her spiritual father. This is um, called Egwe. See what this man said to me. The man said, oh really? I don't bear, Kika, this is not of God. I don't bear witness with this. I've been pastoring and leading for many years. This, and, and this is strange. You know what? Tell the man to call me and let's talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, as Kika is okay, thank you so much, sir, for this. Thank you for this word. Please, this is my mentor's number. He said you can call him so that you can, you guys can, um, um, what's it called? You can, you guys can discuss this word since this is my spiritual authority. The man did not respond to that message. He disappeared. He did not respond to that message. Guess what, guys? Years later, last year, this year, that guy is in a major scandal in, in a particular country. Major scandal. I'm not even saying the scandal is to justify his false prophet. No, I'm just saying that if look at, at the end of the day, everybody's working out as salvation with fear trembling. So test it, push it, make sure the people in your, in your in the environment that you trust as well, take it. Ah, this is what they said. Though. What do you think? You know, just pray about it and the Lord God will give us strength in Jesus' name. As we wrap up, I'll hear um, I'll read one or two more. Many beating. My mom has gone to a church. They said that God answers prayer based on the beating they can endure in that church. Wow. Should have received beating of her life. They said that they were beating people in a church. They, they were beating people in the church and based on how big your problem is. Wow. Can you imagine? So God will help all of us in the name of Jesus. While this may sound, wow, I can't fall for this. I've met people. Manipulation is demonic. Manipulation is, I mean, we never be man. It's demonic. It is like witchcraft. I, bet I was still singing some of my ladies and, and like we're laughing about the things they went through. But it was it's funny now. It wasn't funny then. The things they believe, the things they someone someone was told that you oh your life is like you're gonna be like a snatch. Your life destiny is that you're not marry Ellie. I don't understand how that and we're saying that so that she can remain in that church. 
Don't go out there. Stay here. This is where your husband is. Guys, I pray in the name of Jesus will go on. Our hearts will be open. And if there's anybody that is still going through any pain from what they've suffered with a prophetic word, I pray the Lord will release healing to you in the name of Jesus. Why well, you don't need to disrespect anybody, but you have a responsibility to test the word. Be hungry for God more than what somebody will call out for you. That's why we get it wrong. Do not have itchy ears. Be hungry more for God. Check his word. Sit down. Many of you don't read Bible. When we started the Bible review every week, every 9 p.m., we had more people now. God knows I'm able to join the review. And some people are still joining as testifying. 9 p.m. every day. You don't even have to join the review. In your own quiet time, read the Bible. Study it. Ask the Lord for interpretation. So nobody will come and bang. Now, it's easy to say, if they say, My, uh, let me touch you. You can say, no, that's not of God because it sounds very clear. What about the one that is very subtle? What about the one that is easy for you to get carried away? What about the one that says it's confirming a situation in your life? And then you now say, wow, this person is a prophet. And then because of that, you throw, you throw all caution into the wind. Because the last time you gave you a word, it came to pass. You need to be very sensitive in your spirit. Not to be afraid. Not to scorn prophecy. But God is still doing mar marvelous things. And I pray for us in the name of Jesus, oh God. Everyone that's gone through a bad time with a prophetic word, let it be healing in the name of Jesus. We pray for those families, Lord. Heal those families. Heal the fathers, oh God. Reach out to them in the name of Jesus, oh God. And everyone, oh God, that's here, that's still scorned prophecy, Lord, I pray you'll heal their heart to be able to receive the giftings of, of this prophetic or, or, or reality in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Above all, Lord, help us fall in love with you and your word more than what anybody can see in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. I'll see you tomorrow.